honor to welcome Minister of Economic Development and Trade, the Honorable Darren Billis, to join us for a welcome address from the province of Alberta. Thank you very much for playing along and having some fun with us. I'll hand it over to you. Great, thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Barb, for that introduction and to uh, Ethel Côté. Je veux dire, je ne suis pas un francophone, mais je peux parler un peu français. And you can thank uh, um, a, a former senator, Canadian senator named Jacques Hibert for starting a program many years ago in 1971 called Canada World Youth or Jeunesse Canada Monde. Uh, for those of you that... Someone's ringing. Or maybe that's my intro music, I'm not sure. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm very, very honored uh, to be here today with you. And uh, I want to start off by acknowledging that uh, we gather here today on traditional Treaty 7 territory uh, for the Canadian Community Economic Development Network, ECONUS 2017 conference. And uh, I'd also like to thank the Siksika drummers for drumming us in and for Elder uh, Roy Bear Chief for his, uh, his opening prayer. Uh, something that I wanted to mention, and I do actually have to pull out my phone, uh, the timing of this conference uh, I think is very, very relevant, or at least uh, it's very serendipitous uh, in that my colleague, uh, Minister Richard Fian, uh, who is the Minister of Indigenous Relations, uh, just put out uh, today uh, that we are marking the 10th anniversary of the Universal or United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And uh, we're very proud that two years ago, uh, our government, the Alberta government, for the first time uh, began looking at how to fulfill the principles of the United Nations Declaration in the work that our government is doing. And uh, I could go on at length at, at some of the initiatives that we're looking at, but what I can tell you uh, is that it is a priority for our government, uh, which is why both uh, Minister Fian and our Premier, Rachel Notley, uh, asked every ministry to look at uh, policies and ways to implement uh, the United Nations Declaration of Indigenous Peoples within all of our ministries. Uh, again, uh, the rights of Indigenous Peoples isn't and doesn't just belong to one ministry, it spans uh, to everywhere and to all of us. There is a, a responsibility. So I'm very proud uh, that today marks uh, the two-year anniversary that uh, the government of Alberta uh, has started work to implement those rights. For those of you... Uh, for those of you that are first-time visitors to, uh, to Calgary and to Alberta, I want to uh, welcome you on behalf of Premier Rachel Notley and to welcome you uh, to our beautiful province. I do want to thank all of the partners that helped uh, put this conference on. Uh, obviously, the, the Canadian CED network, Thrive, Momentum, REAP, Calgary Economic Development, Calgary Regional Partnership, and Mount Royal University. And uh, it really was a coming together of, of many different organizations. I also want to acknowledge uh, a special guest uh, that has joined us uh, from our government. Uh, MLA Annie McKittrick is uh, the MLA for Sherwood Park. And I can tell you that she is an incredible, for those of you who don't know Annie, uh, you will by the end of this conference, I promise you. She's also uh, one of the most sociable uh, and friendly people that I've, I've ever met. Uh, but she's really been a champion for community economic development uh, in Alberta. And uh, some of the initiatives that our government is undertaking uh, really, uh, Annie was a voice at the table and has participated all the way through. And if it wasn't so dark out there, I would ask her to, uh, to rise. And so we'll, we'll point you out at some point, Annie, but thank you for joining us. So this conference is focused on economic development and communities. So first, I'm going to give you a quick overview of economic development in the last two years here in the province of Alberta. When Premier Notley asked me to lead the new Economic Development and Trade Ministry, I knew that we had a big job ahead of us. The global price of oil had crashed, jobs were lost, and investment was drying up. In the face of this, our government knew that we still had a solid economic base. And this is due to the fact that Alberta has significant advantages to promote and build on, including vast trade and investment opportunities across many sectors. Our government is approaching economic development strategically from a number of fronts, but the most important 
uh, approach or principle for our government is that we are putting people first. We're making major infrastructure investments in things like hospitals and schools to keep Albertans healthy and to help them pursue their education. We're building roads and enhancing airports to improve our ability to move goods and services in a competitive world. We have programs to diversify our petrochemicals and our in energy industry. We also have programs for smaller enterprises and entrepreneurs to help them start new companies or launch new products. And of course, we have our climate leadership plan, which will enhance our environment, improve our health, and create new jobs in exciting areas such as renewables and clean technologies. From the government side, our goal is to help grow and diversify Alberta's economy by supporting businesses and communities through our Alberta Jobs Plan. Fortunately, we have some of the world's best and most innovative leaders, workers and economic experts. We've listened to these people and together we created the Alberta Jobs Plan, which invests in infrastructure, diversifies Alberta's economy and export markets, supports small and medium-sized businesses, improves access to capital and encourages investment, and provides Albertans with new training opportunities while protecting services that make life better for Alberta families. We're also building on our strengths in sectors like agri-food, the creative industries, tourism, technology, manufacturing, and small business. And we're confident that the Alberta Jobs Plan will continue to produce results because we listened to Albertans and we built it together. I'm happy to tell you that we are already beginning to see a turnaround. Independent economic experts from across the country are forecasting our growth this year and next year will lead the country. In fact, last week, RBC predicted we'll grow at 4.2%, which is almost double the rate that the province grew from 2005 to 2015. And while Albertans have no control over world oil prices, or Canadians for that matter, we can make strategic investments and work with industry to grow our economy. Nearly 49,000 jobs were created here over the last year, and Alberta continues to have the highest employment rate and weekly earnings in Canada. And that's reflected in strong consumer spending, which was up. Uh, and there's a number of other indicators that were up. But I just want to talk to you about some, some programs uh, and initiatives that we've undertaken that, quite frankly, I'm very excited about. Some of you from other parts of Canada have enjoyed some of these programs. Uh, Alberta has been playing a little bit of catch-up, uh, but uh, we have some uh, very exciting uh, initiatives that we've undertaken. So some of you have probably heard of Bill 30, the Investing in a Diversified Economy Act. Uh, and if you haven't, I'll tell you a little bit about it, but there's a section that is included in that act on community economic development corporations. Now, this program uh, is designed to support, whether you're a co-op or you're coming together of a group of people that want to create a for-profit fund that also provides community benefits, social benefits, economic benefits, uh, they now will have the opportunity to encourage Albertans to invest in their own backyard, in their own cooperatives, in their own communal companies, uh, and receive a 30% tax receipt for investing within these businesses that are really in our own backyards. Uh, and I know that there's a number of you here today who participated in helping, uh, not only consulting with us, but frankly, you've really helped us design uh, this program. And uh, I can tell you as far as an update uh, that the program, uh, I'm hoping very soon we will have an announcement. Uh, I will invite you all to come to the announcement, even our out of, out of province guests, you're welcome to come back. Um, but in, uh, in the coming months, we'll have the program stood up. And as I was talking to, uh, to Jeff Loomis from Momentum, uh, who's also been uh, a very strong advocate, uh, that we're taking the time to make sure that we get this program right. And for those of you that are from provinces like Nova Scotia or Manitoba and others that have enjoyed uh, this type of community economic development initiative, um, 
we have looked across the country at different examples and uh, really tried to put together a program uh, that will work for Alberta, but using best practices from, from other provinces. And so again, very soon, uh, we'll have an announcement and Alberta will become the fifth Canadian province to have a credit like this. Another area where our government is supporting growth and, on, and opportunities is through entrepreneurs. Through the Alberta Jobs Plan, we allocated $10 million toward uh, the two-year Alberta Entrepreneurship Incubator Program. We know that Alberta small businesses with incubator support have an average of a 25% growth rate, while the national average, to put this into context for you, is less than 5%. And so we know that businesses uh, thrive and do well when they have supports available to them, whether it's through mentorship, whether it's through uh, working with experienced entrepreneurs to help new entrepreneurs. Uh, and that's part of why we decided to invest uh, $10 million into our Alberta Entrepreneurship Incubator Program. We've also uh, recognized and we recognize that much of our economic strength and entrepreneurial drive is centered in our province's smaller cities and towns. Last year, we launched the Community and Regional Economic Support Program, or CARES program. Uh, what this program is doing is helping communities with limited resources and common interests tackle economic development projects that they wouldn't be able to individually. Uh, I can tell you that we've now funded 62 successful CARES applications, and they are getting great results across the province. And, you know, this program really came from um, from our view on, uh, on, on working with partners in that it is the local leaders and local community members who know what their communities need, who know what the economic uh, opportunities are, and who have the ideas on how to diversify their local economies. I'm a very, very big fan of, of working with the experts, and the experts are people like you on the ground in the community, not people like me or someone sitting in a legislature somewhere. And so we designed this program for communities, regions, municipalities, community organizations to apply for funding uh, to be able to pursue uh, some, uh, some economic diversification opportunities uh, that they wouldn't have been able to otherwise. And it wasn't a lot of money, but I can tell you that, uh, you know, there are an incredible number of exciting new projects and opportunities uh, that local community leaders uh, and community members have, uh, have now access to and are able to pursue. Uh, and so that is a, a program uh, that is unique. I don't know if it exists in other provinces, quite frankly. Uh, we listened to, uh, to the people in our backyard who said, we need this seed money, which may not be a huge dollar amount, but it's a difference between exploring and taking an idea and turning it into either a product or a business versus keeping it as an idea and leaving it on the shelf. Every community exists in a region with various characteristics, attributes, uh, that can enhance econo economic activity. And our regional economic development alliances are another valuable resource for Alberta communities and the investment community. And RITA's regional economic development alliances exist throughout the province that are really a body where a number of different uh, municipalities and organizations come together to look at identifying, uh, again, what supports and opportunities exist within their communities. They connect communities with the expertise that they need to succeed and help communities undertake economic development projects they wouldn't be able to on their own. These are just some of the ways that we are investing in communities and smaller companies to achieve sustainable economic growth and diversification. Another is by encouraging investment and expanding access to capital. The Investing in a Diversified Alberta Economy Act also created two other tax credits. The Capital Investment Tax Credit uh, is a tax credit available for companies that are looking at building a new facility, expanding on an existing, or uh, bringing in new uh, technology. And that tax credit is helping companies 
to make investment decisions today uh, as opposed to waiting for years and years. And it's a 10% non-refundable tax credit up to $5 million. That applies to not just Alberta companies, but quite frankly, that's open to companies internationally around the world. Uh, I can tell you the first window, intake window of that um, came and went. We had a, a significant number of companies that applied. Uh, and of the companies that applied, just to give you a little bit of math of how and does this work, uh, our first intake, we've released about $29 million worth of tax credits that is leveraging $384 million worth of investments. So it's significant. The second, uh, its cousin, is the Alberta Investor Tax Credit. And again, similar to uh, the CDFs, the Community Economic Development Funds, the Investor Tax Credit gives Albertans the opportunity to invest in small and medium-sized businesses here in Alberta. And this tax credit, I can tell you, existed in the province of British Columbia since 1985. Albertans, Alberta businesses, Alberta entrepreneurs have been asking successive governments in Alberta to introduce a tax credit like this, uh, which is a 30% tax credit uh, that you'll get in addition to whatever stake you have, uh, you get in, a, in an Alberta company. Uh, this is one of the, the ways that we are diversifying the economy because this is open to companies in all sectors. Um, and so uh, it, along with the capital investment tax credit, will support about 9,000 jobs and add at least $1.2 billion to Alberta's GDP while helping people propel diversification and job creation province-wide. Uh, as far as the AITC, this is great. Here's my update. There, uh, there are 160 Alberta-based firms that have already applied uh, and eligible companies that are looking at raising uh, over $70 million in equity. Investment's critical for any size business, as many of you in this room will know, and accessing capital is equally important. And that's why we took advice from our business and community leader leaders and unlocked over $3 billion worth of capital for small businesses through ATB, through the Alberta Enterprise Corporation, through AIMCO, and Alberta Innovates. And I just realized now that most of you probably have no clue what half of those are, uh, <laughs> other than ATB, which, uh, which is our, our well, uh, I believe, a supporter and a sponsor of this event. Um, and so you'll learn more about ATB, but they have uh, some very, very creative tools to help especially small businesses and small entrepreneurs. And the most amazing part of ATB, well, it's probably not the most amazing, but what I love is that it is a crown corporation. It is a, a provincial entity that operates independent of government, uh, but uh, is a bank that is able to respond to the needs of the people in our province. Are you about to shoot me off the stage? No, I'm getting close. No. Okay. So as she slowly starts to inch up closer and closer, <laughs> so I'll know when you're breathing over my shoulder that it's, it's time to go. Um, you know, we also work very closely uh, with all orders of government. We work very closely with the federal government. Uh, they have uh, Western Economic Diversification. Again, that uh, is, a, is an arm of the federal government that partners with us on, uh, on a number of projects. And they deliver services through uh, Business Link, which hopefully many of you have heard of, and organizations like Futurepreneur or Alberta Women Entrepreneurs in order to expand, available to or expand support available to both youth and women entrepreneurs. Many of the newest Alberta companies are considering their opportunities to export their products. And we know that companies that export grow at a rate much faster than those that don't. And so we introduced another program called the Alberta Export Expansion, uh, which will help companies, small and medium-sized Alberta companies, uh, break into new international markets. And essentially, it's funding. And for those of you that are small business owners or work with small business owners, you know that they don't have piles of money sitting in a bank somewhere. Everything that they have is reinvested back into their company. And when I talk to small businesses to say, you know, do you do business outside of Alberta, outside of Canada? You know, why, why, why aren't you? Because many of them say, I would love to. The problem is, I don't have dollars for me to go into a new market, whether it's the US or China or Europe. And so we made available a program that will cover up to $20,000 for small businesses 
uh, for their, their flights, their travel expenses, their lodging. Uh, and as well, uh, Alberta has 12 international offices around the world where we have both locals and, uh, and uh, others that work in these offices to support our businesses. So whether that's helping to identify potential companies or investors or buyers um, to support uh, our, our companies when they go overseas to ensure that their time or your time is maximized wherever you go. Uh, and I could stand up here and tell you story after story about companies that have accessed this funding uh, who are now doing business in uh, a variety of countries. Uh, and so uh, we launched the program last October and we've helped more than 100 companies so far meet with clients around the world. And so as you can see, our government's approach, I am winding down now. Oh, I have, <laughs> she's, she's got a, a friend up here, so there's... there's Two of you, soon there'll be a whole crowd of people. Uh, as you can see, our government's approach to economic development is on a number of fronts. But you know, what I'd like to emphasize is that all of these initiatives, we may have rolled them out, but they've all come from you and from our entrepreneurs and uh, community leaders who have said to us, these are the tools that we need to be successful. And we as the government of Alberta realize that we play uh, a, a role, a small role as far as supports, uh, whether again that's through mentorship, expertise, working with organizations like the ones that are putting on this conference uh, to help provide you with the tools you need. And so uh, I do just want to acknowledge very quickly that there's a, a few of my department staff that are here with you and are staying with you over the conference for the next three days. Um, Again, you won't be able to see them because it's dark out there. Uh, but we have Stacy, who is uh, Director of Economic Development Programs, Megan, who's uh, a manager with Program Delivery, and Lisa, who's uh, the Regional Economic Development Specialist here in Calgary. Uh, and what I will ask them to do through the next three days is to try to talk with as many of you as possible, uh, because if you are an Alberta small business or member of a co-op interested in more information, uh, then uh, I would encourage you to connect with them and we'd be happy to share what supports are available. Uh, the last thing I'll say is everything that I've talked about is uh, on a very simple website called jobsplan.alberta.ca and I'll encourage you to, uh, to take a look at that. And so again, you know, we're always interested to hear from you, to hear ideas, to hear what are some of your challenges and barriers and what role we can play to help you overcome them. So I encourage all of you to, uh, to look to us as an ally and, uh, and a support and we want to continue to see you doing well because we know that when our small businesses do well, our province does well and when our province does well, our country does well. So thank you very much. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Thank you so much, Minister Billis. Maybe Bilou in French, we never know. <laughs> but.